Here is an interesting electric circuit question that came up in JE Advance in 2012. Okay. So the question is asking us to find the current through the battery in this given circuit. Now, how do we usually solve this? Well, we are going to assume a bunch of currents and then we use Kirchhoff's current law to reduce the number of current variables and then we will write for each loop we will be writing Kirchhoff's voltage law and then we will solve. Now, how many loops do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we have 4 loops. So, we are going to get 4 sets of equations. So, there will be 4 variables. Now, 4 variables, 4 equations is going to take a lot of time to solve. It's really messy. Then, if you think a little about it, you can see that there is some symmetry involved in this question. Like, look at this resistor combination. Imagine that you can draw a line right through the middle. On the left side and on the right side, can you see some symmetry? 2 ohms, 2 ohms. 1 ohm, 1 ohm. 4 ohms, 4 ohms. Right? Since you are basically cutting it here, you don't have to worry about these two resistors. So, there is no up-down symmetry, but there is a left-right symmetry clearly. Right? So, we can use the symmetry to reduce the number of current variables. And that will then reduce the number of equations required, making things simpler. So, Sedu today was trying to solve this problem and then he asked me a very interesting doubt. So, he said, let us say that the current that is coming in is I here and it is going to split up as I1 and I2. So, the current there is I3, the current here is I4 and obviously the current that is coming out like this is I because that must be the same as this. So, we know that from Kirchhoff's current law, I must be equal to I1 plus I2. Similarly, I must be equal to I3 plus I4. So, this is what we get from Kirchhoff's current law. But if I use different, different currents, right, I1, I2, I3, I4 and I use different, different currents there, that means I am going to end up with lots of complicated calculations. So, the calculations get hard. So, that is why we say because of symmetry, if this is I1, that current must be also I1. So, we say I3 must be equal to I1 and then we say because of symmetry, if this is I2, this current must also be I2. So, that means you are saying I4 is equal to I2. That is, we do not use two different currents here. We actually say if this is I1, that is also I1, this is I2, this is also I2. But uh, why should that be true? Suppose I say that this current that is coming in is 10 amperes. Suppose, I am not saying that is the answer. Suppose this is 10 amperes. Let us say this splits up as 3 amperes and 7 amperes. It has to add up to 10. So, that also has to be 10. But you can say that this can be 4 amperes and 6 amperes, right? 4 plus 6 is also 10. So, how do I know that that is also 3 and this is 7, right? How do you know that I3 must be 3, which is I1? How do you know I4 must be equal to 7, which is I2, right? What is the reason that symmetry implies that this current is equal to this current, this current is equal to this current, right? It seems to be right, but not so clear, right? Is there a clear reason or proof for this? So this is the question that Sedu asked. So, I explained the proof for this to him. Before we continue, can you think about Sedu's doubt? Before discussing Sedu's doubt, let us look at two circuit principles. The first principle is the reversibility of current. Look at this circuit, right? It is a bunch of resistors. Is this symmetric? No, right? This is 2 ohms, that is 5 ohms, this is R, X, we do not know a lot of these values, right? Y, we do not know what this is. This is 4, that is 7. So, this is not even symmetric. And so, what does the reversibility of current tell us? If I push some current, let us say 9 amperes here, you know that 9 amperes has to come out. That is not the reversibility principle, right? Whatever comes in has to go out. But if there is 9 amperes here and 9 amperes going out, that means there must be some current in each of the resistors. Let us say that in this 2 ohm resistance, there is a 4 ampere current. I am just cooking this up. Okay? Let us say in the x ohm resistance, there is a 5 ampere current. And let us say that in the 5 ohm resistance, there is a 2 ampere current. Now, these numbers I have just put in arbitrarily. I would just want you to understand the principle. Now, suppose this current direction I reverse. Well, obviously that current also will get reversed. 
But what will happen to all these currents? Let's think about that. So suppose I reverse this current, which means I'm reversing that current. So there is a 9 ampere current coming in and 9 ampere current going out. What will be the current here? Well, this current was 4 amperes. This current will be 4 amperes, but in the opposite direction. This current was 4 amperes that way. This current is going to be 4 amperes this way. Here, the current was 5 amperes. Here in the X ohm, the current is going to be 5 amperes in the opposite direction. There the current was 2 amperes, so here the current is going to be 2 amperes in this direction. Okay, so if you notice, all the currents inside every resistor just simply is the same magnitude but opposite in direction. So current everywhere has simply reversed its direction. When we reverse the external currents, currents everywhere inside, they have just simply reversed. So this is the reversibility of current principle. Let us now look at the second principle, which is the uniqueness theorem principle. Suppose you take this kind of a combination of resistors and let us say I am pushing a current 9 amperes inside. Basically coming out also, it is 9 amperes. Now if you try to find out what is this current I1, what is this current I2 and what is that current I3, you are going to find unique values. You will find one and only one value for I1 one unique value for I2, one unique value for I3. Any circuit combination, any resistor combination like this, once you give the boundary conditions, now the boundary conditions, well, they are your choice. But once you fix the boundary conditions, all the currents in every resistor uniquely determined, uniquely determined. So this is called the uniqueness theorem. Of course, the uniqueness theorem is a lot more general than this, but I'm just telling you the basic essence of it for this, right? If you write down all the equations and solve it, you will find that this I1 has a unique value. Now, please remember that I must have all the resistor values. If you had lots of wires, then this is not true because then you don't know exactly what the current values are. But if you had all resistors, then you can find the current values uniquely. There's one and only one answer for I1, one and only one answer for I2, one and only one answer for I3. Now, this circuit doesn't have to be symmetric. Right? So, we have now learned two important circuit principles. How is that related to Sedu's doubt? Let us get to Sedu's doubt. So, Sedu's question is for a symmetric circuit, why should symmetry mean that if this current is I1, that also must be I1, right? Why should that current I3 be equal to I1? Similarly, why should this current I4 be equal to I2? Right? He wants a proof for this. Now, I'm going to tell you that by combining the reversibility principle and the uniqueness theorem, which are general statements, right? Not only for symmetric circuits. But if you combine these two, for a symmetric circuit, we can prove that I3 must be equal to I1 and I4 must be equal to I2. I'm not going to give you the proof right now. Try to use this hint. I've given you a hint. You must use the reversibility principle and the uniqueness theorem. You can show that for a symmetric circuit, this means that I3 must be equal to I1 and I4 must be equal to I2. Try to do the proof yourself. If you come up with a proof, please post it in the comment section below. I'll take a look at it. Okay. And next week, I'm going to post a video with my proof. Okay. So see you all next week for the video there. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you have some comments or if you have doubts in physics or math, please write it in the comment section. I will take one of your questions and make my next video. See you all in the next video soon.